Now then, hope you're all good. I was just having a bit of a sort out and a clear up. I dragged this thing out, just giving this a bit of a clean up, but I'll show you what it is. It's a guide for my rip saw. So it's a bit of a track saw alternative, really. I'd have loved to have got a track saw, but they're not good enough for what I want to do. They're, well, they're brilliant, but they won't do the job I need to use it for, which is cutting worktops for making worktops for kitchens. So the thing is with um, with a worktop, let's say if that's your worktop, looking from its edge, and that's for maker. When you cut these worktops, you need to cut from the front edge, so this edge doesn't chip. If you cut that way, the serves like that. And it, it just it'll chip this edge, even if you cut from upside down. So you must go in from the front edge. So that's why I've had to come up with this. Like I said, I'd have loved to track so, but it'd have been a waste of money because I wouldn't have been able to, to use it for this. So basically all this is, I mean, got a colour dust Makita, 18 volt. To be honest, that is only just strong enough to go through 40 mil weight tops. But for boards and everything else, it's, it's fine. It does the job. Yeah, so four, just over four foot long this is, so I can rip panels, eight before sheets up, you know, stuff like that. So let's say if this is, it's nano no ply, you need to, as thin as you can basically, so you're not losing any depth of this, of your saw. So it's nano mil. Um, and what it is, let's say if this thickness there is, I don't know, 80 or 90 mil. What I've got here is, what that is there, is from, so that side is from there to the blade, and this side is from there to the blade. So it runs, it can run along there, or along there. But if you do make one of these, glue it together, I've got a few screws in it as well, and you can leave these over a quarter of an inch or so, then when it's done, actually run your saw down it, then that's just perfect then, run your saw down there and it's done. Uh, when I've finished this, it, you know, I'll put a bit of wax on it and whatever. I've got some silicon spray, I've just put some silicon spray, that's nice. Silicon spray on there, I sprayed it under there as well. So yeah, so the, the reason, like I say, you, when you cut a weight top, you need to cut it from underneath as well. You don't cut it from the top, or it, Let's say if that's the a wet top now, no, this is the foam maker. If you cut it from the top, it will chip. But Malaman and that isn't a problem. Ply isn't, well, ply could chip as well. MDF isn't a problem. So you need to cut it from underneath. So what I've done with this, I put a few holes in it as well. So I can actually screw it to the wet top from underneath. Apart from that, I have some of these as well if I'm cutting boards. So yeah, it's um, actually let me set this up and I'll show you in a bit more detail what I mean about how it works. Right, so I've just set this up. It's on a smaller scale. I haven't got much room, so it's not ideal. But let's say this is the bit of board you want to cut. If you are cutting ply or MDF or whatever, you don't have to cut from the bottom side. But the, but the the opposite side to the machine will always cut a bit neater. But this edge being flush does stop a, a little bit of chipping as well. But it's all about, this is more all about the work tops. So let's say this is your work top upside down and this is the, the edge we want to protect. So we've got to cut into that edge. So basically, when wherever your mark is, mark it there and there, we'll cut in this way. So we've got the smaller part of the guard here, this side. So I just need the smaller piece here. So just put that onto your line. If you have got over you can just use these, these clamps. Which if you're using birds, you've got to use the clamps anyway. But if it's a weight top and you're working from underneath, I have got some holes in here, so you could just screw this down. Because sometimes you don't have enough room to put, put your clamps. So let's say this is clamped down. So then you set your depth and everything. Just get rid of rid of that. And just, just keep steady. 
you know you can tipple a little bit but you've been doing this long enough to know what to do <laughs> so you just start it off and just take it steady then if you was cutting from the other side so let's say if the film is on this side just spin that round clamp it on again then this is the right width for this and that's against there then just go steady again this one isn't going to tipple this time because you've got the width there so if you are cutting boards that don't matter use this side all the time which is easier for you but when it comes to having to cut in from a certain way you know you've got to use the other side or this side then just go steady obviously i'm facing the wrong way for doing this so yeah that's that's about it and um I'm, i've been using this for about three years now and it's spot on it's really good right i've set that up i've only got enough room to put one clamp on but i can hold that steady it's clamped quite secure really so we'll give this one a go so yeah that goes back line it up So that just cuts totally flush with this. So if you are cutting boards, like I said, this edge is going to stop the Malamine chipping a little bit. But if you want it perfect, have the cut it so the good edge is underneath. And there we go. Hope that helps you. If you want to see more of this sort of thing, just subscribe and I'll do more just for you. Bye for now.